Hi everybody, how we doing? I just hit the mic. As you can probably see, number one, profile, you're looking at me like this. Uh, number two, you might see some things are kind of a mess. My mic is right here, which makes no sense because it should be in front of me, but instead it's behind me. Uh, for those of you who don't know, my glass desk 100% shattered and exploded. Luckily, while I was gone, nobody was hurt, but it's a, it, it is a miracle, especially because most of my hardware, except for one HDMI cable, pretty much everything was okay. So I'm literally working on the floor right now. Here's the project. Yes, this is in fact the project that you're looking at right now. I don't know if you can see this with the, your resolution, but it's called Disco Funk because I didn't have a name for it when I started the project. I started, okay, so I started this song back in early mid 2015 uh so this has been roughly three years in the making as you know you heard it as the rttta theme and uh the reason it's the rttt it wasn't made actually for rttta in fact uh when i rebranded and r essentially rebooted rttta on my main channel uh moving it from gc waves i realized i didn't have a theme song and I thought this one was fitting with kind of the aesthetic and the vibe of RTTTA. So I just decided to take a snippet of this track as I was working on it and just throw it into RTTTA as kind of the theme. So this song was not made for RTTTA. Uh, it's not an expansion upon that. The show actually came after the song or the, the, show's, the, the show as it is now. A lot of the time I'll hear a certain hook, uh, often a lyrical hook in my head. Um, and I'll work off of that hook that I heard, uh, and then create a song out of that. Lots of times I hear the tune first and then the lyrics come later. Very rarely do the lyrics come first. Very, very rarely. Unless it's like the hook line or something like that. This is what I was getting to is it, it the file's called Disco Funk because I had no clue what it was going to be called. I just was like, yeah, it's Disco Funk. So let's call it that. So I heard the bass line. I lay down the, uh, which I don't know if I still have. Do I still have? I do. Okay, so this is the original drum beat that I used using primarily uh, Lindrum samples. Lindrum is a drum machine that was used a ton in the 80s. Uh, I've layered it with other stuff so it doesn't sound exactly sound for sound. I don't know what word I'm looking for there. Uh, exactly like the original Lindrum, but you can hear Lindrum now. Uh, in music, uh, 24K Magic is a Lindrum. Uh, that's that's a Lindrum. Uh, pretty much, probably 70% of Michael Jackson's Thriller was Lindrum. So, right. This is, that was the original. And there's also reverb on it because, uh, oh yeah, I should probably get to that. So, I started this track in Logic Pro 9, actually. So, transferring it to Logic Pro 10, some of the sounds and some of the plugins and the algorithms changed. For copyright reasons, I'm not gonna play it, but if you go look up, there it is by Shalamar, S-H-A-L-A-M-A-R. <laughs> it's an old disco track that really didn't make it out of the 80s. It's kind of was one of those songs that I feel is generally forgotten, but it's such a great track. Um, and it's it was kind of the overall inspiration of the track. Uh, it's kind of what gave me the idea to write it and and make it sound how it does um and that song's probably 81 82 um but fun fact the bassist uh was co-choreographer for uh, like one of the co-choreographers for michael jackson throughout the 80s uh and he also was the one to teach michael jackson the moonwalk so so yeah that was kind of the initial inspiration and originally Everything was a lot more uh, reverby. So this is what the song sounded like. Um, this is one of the earliest versions of it. And it's got this whole intro that just goes on way too long. Right, and you've got your piano there. Everything is, it almost sounds more MIDI, I think. And I, and I went way more subtle with that in the uh, final thing. But as you can... And I still kind of like the sound of this, but...
So yeah, it sounds. It definitely sounds different. It sounds almost a. It almost does have a little bit more of an '80s flair to it than even the final mix does. I think because the final mix, and we'll just go ahead and well, I'll mute it for now just in case we want to show show it off later. But yeah, even as you can hear, there's a little bit more going on, right? So I completely cut out, and I thought it sounded great, but I think it was fighting too much with everything else. But there's kind of that. It got too busy with the rest of the track. As I was starting to think it was getting somewhere, I suddenly heard uh, Red Bone by, by Childish Gambino. Gambino. That changed the game. That, that changed the whole sound of the song uh, because I loved the kind of the more subtle psychedelic funk. And you can hear it because I, I decided to pull back a lot on the beginning. Get rid of that intro because it was way too long. Um... And I immediately jump right into the verse, uh, and it's way more minimal and a lot more uh, psychedelic-ish sounding. Ultimately, it's essentially a mix of Redbone and There It Is by Shalimar. I actually, I went back not too long ago and actually looked at some of the lyrics. Uh, or some of my original lyrics. I, I, I tried a whole bunch of different things. I tried um, doing something that was a bit more like I was on some planet far away, you know, you know, galaxies away, and I was trying to communicate with Earth or something. Uh, it had some neat lyrics after reading it back. And again, this is stuff I don't even remember, um, but they were, in the, they were in my folder, um, and I see how they worked or how I worked them with the song. Ob they obviously didn't stick. Uh, and, uh, you know, even reading them back, I'm like, yeah, I mean, you know, they weren't all the best ideas. Um, but ultimately, uh, it came down to being in a super complicated relationship. Uh, and that kind of became the the gist of the song was just being frustrated because I felt like things were constantly going back and forth. I don't even remember what some of the lyrics are for uh, or, wh or what they mean. I mean... Uh, I mean, I even went back and looked at some of my older lyrics and read some stuff. I was like, what the heck does that even mean? Uh, so, while I, while overall the, the definite meaning of the song is being frustrated with a relationship that seemed to keep going on and off and wasn't, it was just constantly kind of this, it ended badly every time, but we would try and come back to it. That was pretty much how it was. Um, there are certain lyrics that I'm sure you would probably ask me, what does that mean? And my answer would be, uh, to be honest, I don't even know. <laughs> so, um, but it sounded good. So I just decided to keep the, I, I actually recorded, I recorded the lyrics not even knowing what some of it meant, just knowing the overall meaning. And because it sounded good and worked with the track, I decided to just keep it. So that's pretty much how the song came together. Uh, let's get into the actual track. So it's, well, not counting this thing I just threw in here. It's 95 tracks. Uh, that's a lot. Some of a lot of that is being unused, though, as you can see. Uh, with all these Lindrum tracks, I muted them, hid them. They're no longer used because here, just for comparison's sake, here is the original drums, right? That's the original. Um, and then I decided to go. Let's hide that. And I re-recorded all of them and drummed them myself. I wanted it to be super tight sounding. So while we've got the room mics and we have the overhead mics, um, I pretty much, uh, up until I think the chorus, or at some point, I, the overheads are completely not heard. Um, and the room, the room mics are used once for a fill. Uh, right, uh, the transition between verse two and, and the chorus, uh, the da dun that, that's the only time you hear the room mics. Um, but pretty much I tried to s keep this as tight and small sounding as possible. And of course I added in the tape hiss to kind of add a little bit more character to it. So. And then you've got your snaps there, um, which the snaps have been there the whole time. Uh, just some logic snaps. Uh, and then here, let's also turn on. Uh, and 
then there's a build up and so there's your overheads right there yep and then that's that's just claps how many claps are there so there's four four tracks of claps that I did Oh yeah, and then I also cheated, um, but we do this all the time in the studio. Uh, pretty much layered the, the crashes, because I didn't want the overheads to be too loud, but the overheads are also what are giving me the crash, um, because there's no mics directly on the crash, uh, at least not when we recorded, um, though I'd be open to trying it. Um, it's just not usually done. So I, so I have a sample uh, overlaying my actual crashes and it's just like logic stock right so that's with them this is without them right so it just adds a, a bit more crash uh, so that's pretty much the beat uh, in a nutshell it, at the end of the day, it's pretty simple. Let's see. Um, kick. Now, so for some of you, this may not matter at all. Uh, but if you want the technical stuff. Now, this was before... Uh, I mixed this mostly before uh, Logic added in their virtual EQ... Or uh, vintage EQ collection. Uh, and I also had quite a few more plugins after I... Got this that I would have used. Uh, probably for the kick, I would have uh, used a vintage EQ, uh, vintage console EQ, and just cranked the low end, uh, prying the 50 to 60 hertz. Um, but ultimately, I did not do that. I've got two EQs here. I don't know why, actually. I don't remember why now. So that's my first EQ. Okay, so the second one is just trying to drop out a certain frequency there. Uh, that was probably kind of annoying. In fact, we could probably turn it off to... Yeah, it's just get, taking out just a tad bit of that. No, but high end, that may have been fighting with other frequencies there. Uh, so yeah, you've got... You've got your kick... Right there's your there's your hat where you can you can hear a bit of the snare, and I've completely dropped all the low end there, so that's without the EQ. That's with the EQ, and then I've got a noise gate on it. I've also got a noise gate on the kick that just helps get rid of some of the sound of the other. Uh, drums that we don't need um, and then snare oh so I think snare bottom is used later though isn't it it is yeah so I'm only using the top mic for the snare here for a bit and as you can see I kind of I kind of bring up a little bit of that low end kind of make it give it a little fat sound I've also got an uh, enveloper enveloper I, I don't know how you say it but pretty much what this does it'll it'll take that the audio signal It'll, uh, on, on, at the very front of the audio signal, it'll crank it. As you can see here, that's what I'm doing. I've got it cranked. Um, and then I have it actually cutting out some of the tail end of it just to make it sound tighter. So, with it, without it. You hear, it just makes it ever so slightly more punchy. It, it gives it a bit more of a snap just kind of attacks you, um, which is how I like my, I like my drums with a bite, I, li I like them to really pierce, um, and then you've got your compressors, I use compressors a lot on drums, not heavily, um, but I like what, what, it, 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 in the same vein as the enveloper, it kind of, it'll pull it back, it's pretty much what the compressor, at least with the drums, what I'm doing is I'm taking that audio signal, and like a millisecond after it hits, pulling it back to give it a bit more of a punchier sound. So it's like, duh, duh, rather than being like a, you, you get what I'm saying? 
So, and I do that with like all, like the kick, I definitely do that on because it just gives it more of that punch. So there you go. That's the technicalities of, I, I don't want to bore you. So that's, that's the drums. The bass is fake, believe it or not. I'm sure you knew that, but it is. Uh, it, in fact, if you look right here, it's literally freaking like a... Uh, Charlie Puth with his uh, attention song kind of blew me away because I thought it was real bass that was spliced up. Like, I knew it was edited, but I didn't think it was 100% fake. It's 100% fake. The bass and attention is fake as frick. It's Trillion. Uh, I'm not even using Trillion. I'm using um, Motown bass, which is just a stock Logic bass here because a lot of this stuff that I, I built it Back in 2015, when I didn't really have a lot of those plugins, most of what I had was stock. So, but I got it to sound real fat there. So here's here's my EQ that I'm messing with. Now the thing about the channel EQ, which is why these days I would be using the vintage console EQ instead for the lower end stuff, is I like the color and I like the warmth that it gives uh, bass or kick. Uh, I think it adds a lot more character than channel EQ, which is just improving the frequencies, which is perfectly fine, and it's worked great for me for a long time, but it doesn't add that same kind of color um, that I'm often looking for. I've also got distortion here, which is shaping a lot of the sound on, on night and day, night and day. Um, and then I've got a compressor on that too, compressor... Uh, it's probably pretty light compression. Uh, I would advise if you're using compress. I mean, it's going to be a learning. It's an art form. I'm, I'm telling you. But actually, it's I'm I'm hitting it hard on the bass. Um, if you see there, pretty much what that'll do is. I mean, I mean, yeah. I won't go into the technicalities. Compressors really can help shape the sound. Um, and then along with that bass you've got my clavinets and actually this is funny because originally it was only one and it didn't have that fuzz the wah I think the wah 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 that was a that was something I decided to add in after listening to a lot of Stevie Wonder and again listening to Redbone and being like yo I like that dirty kind of wah effect so I added that to my original stock clav, but then I got Keyscape and stacked it so you have two different sounding claps on both sides, and I thought that added a lot more of an interesting sound. So this is the stock clav. Yeah, I don't know, I, I, I like it. Um, and then you've got this little muted electric thing I've got going here, it's just a... Yeah, it's just a little, and that's the thing is, uh, like I said, after a while I decided I really wanted to make it kind of more minimal uh, and, and chill to a certain extent uh, at, at the front as opposed to going into this like right immediately. And what that all that is is obviously just a spliced up reverse piano. Yeah, it's Keyscape reversed. So I, I played it. It probably was this. It was probably this track. And I, or, yeah. Uh, oh, I don't know. Yeah, so actually, originally I used Addictive Keys. In fact, actually, the original original may have been stock Logic Piano. I, I don't advise using them. Uh, they're okay for certain stuff, but I have grown to just not be a fan. Oh yeah, let's let's focus on that uh So there's a lot of crap going on here. As you can see, I have a lot of plugins here. Can you see that? Hopefully you can see that. Maybe uh yeah, you can. Well, I don't know if you can see it in detail, but my webcam thing is over here, so. Um so I've got a lot of effects running through this and uh, again, a lot of this was cuz I liked how kind of strange the vocals sounded in Redbone. And originally, uh, the vocals in, in the first verse, in fact, I don't know if this is them, uh, but we can sure check. 
Uh, I don't know if this is the original book. It is, and I did not have that pitch shift on there. Oh, well, I added it thinking maybe I'd try doing it, and I didn't like it. Even know how to start. So that's that's the original vocals, uh, but then again, Redbone changed everything, and I was like, "Yo, I like the falsetto idea." So instead, I pretty much put everything in verse one, up an octave in my falsetto, so it became. And there's like a weird delay in there as well. I don't know what's actually doing that. Is it the pedal board? It's the pedal board. So on the pedal board, I've got a little bit of a fuzz thing going on, and then I've got this delay. Yeah. Oh, and it's a re. I think it's on reverse delay too. So it's real weird. I I, I tried a whole bunch of crap. You've got your EQ, your compressors, you've got a microphaser here, and then we've got a J37 uh, tape emulation, which I love because this thing adds a lot of color. And this is actually something I got later too, but I just decided, uh, at least on the vocals, I really wanted to add it. It's just, it's a subtle thing. But I think it adds, I think it adds some color and character. Uh, that really improves the sound of it. So you've got that, uh, yeah, and then you've got your weird 80s synth there. Yeah. So I have another, like, and I'm cutting out a lot of the low end on that to give it a bit more of like a whispery, kind of airy sound to it. And then I've got like a slap back kind of verb on it, I think. So it's off here. It turns... Oh, it doesn't turn on on that one. Whatever. Where is it? There we go. So it's, <laughs> look at all these buses. Oh, right. So I've got um, what we call, uh, well, what we call, I don't remember. Uh, I'm forgetting the term for it, but essentially, I, I, it's parallel, parallel mixing. That's it. So pretty much what I'll do is I'll, I'll, I'll send the track to another auxiliary, to a bus. And then what I'll do is just slam, as you can see, the threshold's way back here. I really don't know now. I'm doing. I got so I'm just I've got it now of course because the send is so low it's actually not doing a whole bunch um, I've also got the input way down here but um, so I'm not using it as heavily as I would on something else but pretty much what I'm nor what usually I'd be doing is slamming that compression so it, it, I've got kind of like two tracks one with like kind of normal compression it's a bit more uh, I, I don't know, it's more normal, let's just say normal, um, but then a second auxiliary that's just slamming it, and it's just, like, heavy compression, uh, uh, you know, uh, up the wazoo, and it just kind of, it, it, it brings out certain, uh, syllables and, and, uh, words more, uh, and I think it often adds a bit more punch to the vocal. So, what I've got here is I actually have two of the same exact performance but one is copy pasted with a ton of fuzz on it so this this is without that fuzz track it just it just adds a little bit um you definitely hear it in spots like this you can hear that fuzz there. Like if I took it out, I think it just adds. I think it gives it some dirt, some grit. Um, and then of course, yeah, we've got we've got Bennett Roach on the guitar, who is fantastic. 
Um, and that's that's got that slapback reverb, which was a really big... I, I try to emulate it with Space Designer. These days I'd probably use Chroma Verb, uh, but Space Designer is gorgeous. Um, and uh, which one is it that's used? Okay, so this bus too, what this is, is actually, here, let me, let me go ahead. I would open up my mixer, but I don't have a second monitor right now. Um, that's without that big verb, but what I've got is kind of this more roomy reverb, which gives it a bit of a wider sound, so if I turn that off, this is what it sounds like. That's like completely dry. There's nothing on it there except for com the obvious, like, I mean, dry in terms of effects, not EQ or compressor. Right, so that's with that room reverb on. It just gives it a bit of a larger, wider sound. Um, and then you've got, of course, the slapback, uh, as I call it, um, reverb, which is, it kind of treats itself as, I, I kind of turn it into a delay. Uh, people that use, I mean, a ton of people did this effect in the 80s, but most recently, like what I heard yesterday that totally uses it, uh, is Janet Jackson's Nasty. That that song is entirely this kind of slapback reverb sound. And if I were to show you the Space Designer thing, which of course it looks different now because they redesigned it since I used it, but yeah, you've got this massive pre-delay, this is your volume envelope, it cuts out pretty quickly, I make it pretty short, yeah, that's pretty much the gist of it. I think I use that on the vocals, too. Um, How to use them when you got your gas <laughs> and then that's like a... That's, it's a simulation of, uh, of the DX7, though I have a freaking DX7. But I use my DX7 for the bass instead of the... It's spliced up all weird. It sounds horrible on its own, but... It just gives it a bit more bite, I think. <laughs> There's the DX7. That's that's the real D DX7 right there. And for those of you who don't know, the DX7 is on every 80s song. Like, if, if it's not on... It came out in, like, 82 and was pretty much used on everything after that. So... If you want the 80 sound, use a DX7 or an emulation of it. DX7 and Roland D50 pretty much ruled uh, the music industry in the 80s. Um, uh, yeah, and then I've got my synth thing here. My This is very 80s as well. There used to be a delay on that, but I, I guess I dropped it. I guess, it, yeah, it probably just made this track too busy, so I dropped it. Yeah, Bennett's little guitar bass line thing there really kind of finished up the, the grit of the track here, though. It... it And that's also, I call it Audio 3, I guess I never gave it a name. But what that is, is also DX7. But I can't, I kept the delay on that, that's interesting. Some of this I'm coming back to now, like, now why did I do that? Um, and then you've got this weird programmy stuff here, which you hear, uh... <laughs> this weird crap. So you hear that, right? It's kind of just, it's under the mix, but it's there. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much that. Uh, of course, you've got, you've got your funky...
Ah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, this is fun. I actually, I, did I get this from Beyonce's Single Ladies? I think I did. Because she, they, they totally do this in the last chorus. If you, if you like, yeah, because it's like, if you like, it, put it in, and, and, and like in the last chorus, it's like, you should go back and look. It's a great track. Yeah, just that little, it's really cool. Yeah. And I'm using, I'm just doing that right here. I mean. You want this thing now, you can't make it up your mind. You want it this way. Yeah, so, and then you've got. You want this thing now, you can it. You want it this way, all of that. So yeah, I, I ultimately, I think, use addictive keys for pretty much all the piano. Most of the time these days I'm using Keyscape, but Addictive Keys does have a certain kind of quality to it that I like. Um, so yeah, and then you've got your vocals doing their thing. Want this thing now, you're indecisive. You can't make up your mind. Do you want it this way or that way? You want dances I can't find. It's not flashy and I like that. But you want it to be right. I'm a perfectionist with other things, but not this little sign. I play a game, but it gets me every time. And I'm proud to shame. <laughs> And to kind of add to the natural kind of grit sound, sometimes I'll, I'll tweak a little bit with pitch stuff. Um, sometimes I'll throw light pitch correction on it just for, just cause I like the sound of it. Um, other times it's to quite literally uh, fix up a performance that I like the performance, but, but I can't get my voice to, I, I've improved a lot. And I think, I think uh, for the most part, I don't really need to use pitch correction, but on this I use literally none uh, at all. No, no tuning on even any one note uh, because I kind of like the uglier sound of it. Uh, it's not like ugly, but it's it, it's not perfect, and I like that about it. It gives it a bit more grit. Uh, yeah, so let's break down. Again, this is, this is Addictive Keys. Um, again, crap ton of filters on it. You've got a rotor, uh, which kind of gives it that, uh, in some ways it's 60s vibe, because they really used Leslie cabinets a lot back then. That completely changed. In fact, that might be the largest factor to the sound. And then I've got an overdrive, which is kind of giving it some of that bite. Sitting like this, like an idiot, is killing my back. Do not ever do this. In fact, never break your desk. Never, never have a desk that breaks like this. Good lord, sitting on the floor. Um... Yeah, just that little bit of overdrive gives it a little bit more grit, I think. Uh, and then I think the direct mix, I'm just centering it. I wanted, yeah, I wanted it to sound more mono. Uh, it was a little too stereo without it. I thought it was too wide, which usually in this day and age, you want things to sound wider. Nah, not with this, no. And then I've got a phaser. It's just giving a little bit of like a wow, just very subtle. Um, <laughs> wow, I'm Burno now. Um, and then you've got your compressor, and I'm throwing another tape emulation on it. Again, it just it just adds some nice color, and, and so then yeah, what what you're seeing here is for the most part this is actually MIDI. Um, however, right here there's certain things you obviously cannot do with MIDI. Uh, so what I'll do is bounce down certain notes, and then here I've got them reversed. Right.
Yeah. Simple as that. And with this, actually, just because I thought it made it even weirder, uh, I intentionally slightly pitched up, as you can see here, slightly pitched it up as it went. It's just, it's subtle, but it's just, it, it's just slightly more weird and I liked it. So that's that. Yeah, that's a patch in Keyscape. Uh, this is Keyscape, by the way. Killer. Killer. I adore it. Uh, lead Y1. And then I made some adjustments to it, and that's pretty much it. Oh, yeah, I've got... Oh, no, I don't. I thought I did. Never mind, I'm thinking aloud. Don't, don't, bother, don't worry about me. Oh, I put a tape delay on it on, yeah, so if you, if you can hear it, if you've got headphones on, if you can hear, there's kind of a little bit of a slap back on your right ear with this. It gives it a bit more of a larger room sound. Like if here, if I turn it off, you'll hear it if I turn it off, especially if you have headphones on. It's game changer. Makes it so much wider and cooler. I love it. Um... Let's see, uh, uh, yeah, and then my favorite part vocally, of course, because I love harmonizing. And, th and this took a while simply because I threw a whole bunch of effects and kind of a kind of idea to it, uh, because it was kind of like grabbing you, pulling you back, and then pushing you forward into that final chorus. Game. Oh yeah, and it's it's anticlimactic because I didn't have my lead in there, which is like that. Why can't you just speak the truth? I play a game, but it gets me every time, and I'm proud to shame. But do I even try? And the waves keep getting closer, and I know just what to do, but I'm afraid to. Why can't you just speak the truth? Yeah, that's just uh. Ooh, what if I'm hurt again by you? Yeah, I just think it it's a great, and that was actually a, a last minute aud a, a audition addition to the uh, audition. Good lord, to um to the track. This truth that was actually not there. It was originally just why can't you why can't you speak the truth? I play a game. So that last, like, do just speak the truth. That was that was actually last minute. Um, because I I really felt like it was lacking there. Uh, in terms of building back up and grabbing you at the uh, in that last chorus. Uh, and of course I also just wanted to throw in some harmonies because I felt like it wasn't geared enough without them. Probably finally, we've got the solo guitar. Which I actually ended up having to take out quite a bit of it, um, which can be painful. Uh, but just in terms of arranging and making sure things didn't get too busy and fighting with each other. But And I've got like a, a fuzz sound on that too. Look at all these effects. Yeah, I'm totally. <laughs> That's a bit. Yep, and then that ends the song. So, killer, killer. I just, I let Bennett take the ball and ro roll with it there. He just, he just ran with it. And it was great. He did a fan. It sounds solid. And then I added some fuzz sounds and just made it sound a little bit more kind of psychedelic in a way. And 60s-ish, um, I think. Because it sounds a bit more shimmery. Um, I, think it, I, I think it sounds great. Uh, yeah. I think that's it. And check out my Patreon. Support me there. Free stuff. Exclusive early looks.
Exclusive streams that nobody else gets to see. Stuff like that. We play Jackbox sometimes. Every once in a blue moon. <laughs>